How's it at all? Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hope you guys are having a great and exceptional day. Today's word of the day is uh, mace, which stands for an aerobic, aromantic uh, spice made from the dried and covering of a of the nutmeg and whatnot of of the nutmeg and whatnot. And a lot of people nowadays, well, for a long time have utilized various aspects of mace for protection in, in certain situations, you know, pepper spray in certain situations. Nowadays, people have tasers, you know. Um, I mean, hey, in America, you have a right to your own self-defense. And, you know, hey, I implore everyone to have any sort of self-defense measures, you know, in the right situations, obviously, because certain people take, uh, utilize self-defense in the wrong situation, and I'll leave it at that. But, um I chose this word today because everybody needs some sort of mental protection, physical protection, all at the same time. The best forms of mental protection is to cut out as much negativity and drama out of your life as, as humanly possible. Because in today's world, you can get on your cell phone, you turn your TV on, you turn, you get on your computer, you're going to see something negative popping up and it triggers something um, in people's mind to um, where they're like, they could either give up hope or they're always talking about something negative and bad that's happening and they never ever want to discuss what's good going on because when every, whenever i'm approaching a conversation like that well, i always say well what's good going on in your life you know and then, and then that people usually give me this this blank stare like i'm being a jerk towards them but i'm like no let's just can we start the day off on a positive note and let's end the day off on a positive note that's my personal opinion but a lot of people can watch the news 24 7 and not realize that they're consuming nothing but negative and fearful uh, content all at the same time to where they, um, you know, they don't really discuss anything good happening. They're always discussing what's bad going on. And a lot of people say, well, hey, man, that's life, you know, but I'm like, life isn't 90 to 100 percent bad. It's 50 50 on all aspects. You know, for some people, it might be 100 percent, but not for everybody. So for those of us that have it somewhat good in our lives, let's talk about some good things that are happening. But I know that doesn't make for good TV or good social media content. So what do I know, right? Anyways, today's quote of the day is by Roger Satpach. He stated, there are no traffic jams along the extra mile. I couldn't agree with that statement more because great example, we all get placed in traffic jams regardless of where you live at. I've seen traffic jams in small towns, um, suburban communities and big cities. So we all have the situations where we can be put into any sort of traffic jam, especially um, we can get jammed into a career that we're not really passionate about or we really don't care about. We can get jammed into, because we were told by our peers that, you know, this is the best course of action. I mean, heck, where I grew up at in the DMV area, you know, everybody says, you know, the best two things were, were to just join the military or find a job with the federal government. Is there anything wrong with that? No. But a lot of people um, with the mindset of that uh, didn't have any did have too many inklings outside of, well, one can have a, a good career outside of that. If not in corporate America, then maybe with their own small family business or maybe working for a small family business. Or um, one could actually um, make a decent living as a skilled tradesperson. Or one could actually make a decent living passively by owning real estate. Or one can make a decent living by owning their own franchise or, you know, online business. Though, when I was growing up, those conversations weren't happening as much as they are happening now. And I'm glad that those conversations are happening now. You know, um, you know, hey, one, if you work real hard at your career, you can set up assets classes via uh, real estate rental properties. You can um, buy a multifamily house. You can um, buy stocks, you know, shares of stocks and bonds and whatnot. Cryptocurrency wasn't around back then, but you could buy, um, what is it? You can, you can get into a... Um, like the Rothschilds did, getting to a whole whole term, uh, whole life insurance policies where you can, you know, for a couple of years, you can make insurance payments and whatnot. And then you can uh, talk to your insurance agent on how you can uh, borrow money from, you know, basically utilize it as one would utilize a house, getting an equity line of credit from a house, but actually you're borrowing from your money from your insurance policy. And the, the way you're paying it back is just you're paying it back with your monthly payments that you're already going to pay anyways. So you can utilize that money to buy into franchises or buy into a business or um, creating your own business or buy more real estate, things of that nature. So a lot of times people get caught up into traffic jams economically because they're only, at least when I was coming up, you know, as a, as a millennial, um, the, because back then, put it this way, if I, 15 years ago, if I knew now what I knew, if I knew then what I know now about economics, my life would be very different. 
I would say that much because, and if I was around people having these kinds of conversations, my life would be very different. Because I would, I, I would always wonder how I would see people who were immigrated to the United States of America, um, why in such big numbers they might have been working their butts off, but they were owning the restaurants around me, they were owning the rental properties around me, they were owning the franchises around me, and I wasn't seeing that being done in big numbers with the African American community. Um, and I was just, and I would always like, when I would go to, especially when I used to smoke cigarettes, I would go to, um, like, I don't do that anymore. I don't miss that. But, you know, I would go to 7-Elevens and just have conversations with the different 7-Elevens with the people who work there. You know, um, sometimes I'd run into the owners there and, you know, they, the way that they were talking about money was a way I'd never heard before. And in the YouTube space that we live in now, in the podcast space, the way that they were talking about money is the way I hear people talking about money now. Um, it was just just a different mindset because I'm just like, well, how are you families owning all these things? And they're like, a lot of times they're like, hey, either we came to the U.S. with money or we came to the U.S. and lived, lived like others would not live uh, by having the three to four families in the house, by buying the house and taking equity lines or credit loans out from the house, uh, buying more houses or uh, getting insurance policies where we can borrow money from, or uh, we would buy into franchises and things of that nature. Um, and if we had a successful business, then we would take out an equity line of credit on that business, and then we would buy another business, so we'd buy more homes. It's just those are the conversations that were happening, and those, you know, though easier said than done, those are the conversations that were happening so that they could get through the track, the traffic jams that are, that certain jobs can put one in, uh, can can keep one stuck in or whatnot because they did they were not having the conversations outside of their career and things of that nature. So the best way to me to avoid any sort of uh, economic traffic jam in life is to think outside of the box. And you know nowadays we you know I, I want that to say I'm happy about the younger generation coming out of high school and college college and the military. They can listen to people. They can listen to millionaires and billionaires break down certain strategies for free or certain instances they have to pay on how the, how they can go after their dreams and live the lifestyle that they want and not just live the lifestyle that their employer allows them to live. So that's the beautiful thing about the United States of America. People have the freedom to do a lot of certain things, especially, but they just have to have a lot of the will and the access to want to just listen, read, um, and take, take risks and go from there. You know, now easier said than done. Is it a hundred percent guarantee of success? No, but you, everybody's learned nowadays that getting a college degree is not a hundred percent guaranteed of success. So there's the only guarantee is the amount of work that you put in and you go from there. It, you know, will there be pitfalls? Absolutely. But, um, yeah, this, this is definitely turning more of a rant instead of a, just a word of the day, but it just matters not only the work that you put in, but the people that you associate with on a regular basis, the information and the media that you consume on a regular basis. And that's what everybody has to do, that self-evaluation. And I think the best thing about the pandemic is it allowed everybody, including myself, to do a self-evaluation, self-assessment of where my life is now and where I want it to go in the future. All right. Super great for your things, family. Like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the online store. Uh, if you're a crypto investor, don't forget to check out Gold Standard Partners. And as I always say, um, Make money move so you're going to live bro like a fool. Take care, family.